What's up people, my name's Anton and welcome to September. Today it's going to be a little bit of a shorter video but it's going to be a quick crash course into importing and exporting ACES from C4D and how you can get your file or project looking a little something like this. So in general, the, um, just things you should know is that the reason ACES is important is because as of right now it is the most realistic colour space you can use compared to your other options from Redshift and Octane and stuff like that. You've got um, LDR and HDR sort of sRGB exports which look nice but you'll realise they lack a lot of contrast and a lot of accuracy when talking about real life. So this shot that I've got working on the moment is um, an example of the sort of thing you can create. So I'm really quickly going to blitz through um, what you need and how you can do it because as of right now After Effects doesn't currently support it. Um, and that might get a little confusing when you're exporting or rendering through Picture Viewer in C4D and exporting into After Effects, you'll realise it doesn't look the way you were working on. And it's because of this. So what you want to do is firstly, we'll start from C4D the way you're exporting. Um, I've mentioned this briefly a few times before, but you essentially want to make sure that in your render settings, you've got your renderer set to Octane, which should be fairly straightforward. That is going to take a little while to activate. But once you've done that, a little Octane tab is going to come up here. So once that's loaded, you want to leave your buffer type, make sure it's on 32-bit, and set your color space here to ACES CG. Tick force tone mapping, just as a matter of habit. And that should render your file out. Once you've selected here as an open EXR 32-bit sequence, um, you will get a 32-bit high-quality ACES sequence there. So obviously, you've got your all frames, whatnot. Um, everything else remains the same, but those are the settings that you really want to make sure you're checking in C4D. And once you've got those, you'll end up with something that looks, well, you'll end up with something that looks a little like this. And this will be your EXR sequence. This will look like once it's actually rendered into your folder. And once you're in this point, you're ready to import into DaVinci. So DaVinci is essentially a, a new sort of software on the block, but it's like an all-in-one import export um, bit of kit. It's free as well for um, essentially high quality cinematography work but it works really really well for the kind of digital art that I do so what you want to do is um, just really super, super quickly I'll make a separate video on this but it's all in one right so you've got your media where you import you've got your cut and edit which is essentially like Premiere Pro you've got Fusion which is a bit like Nuke where you sort of have like After Effects but with nodes you've got your colour correction here your fair light where you add audio and your deliver where you export but for now what you want to make sure you're doing is hitting Control I on your keyboard and it'll pull up the folder well you need to locate it but it won't let you select the entire sequence so what you want to do is select the first one and hit Control a on your keyboard then just click open and you'll see it'll import it there um, at this point once this loads in you want to remember the resolution that you're working at because you want to head into the project settings really quick and just tweak that so if you go to file project settings you want to set your timeline resolution to whatever you're working with so for mine this is about 2560 by 1080 so we can set this to 4k and set the processing to 2460, 2560 by 1080 here. Um, make sure this is set to 30. And the video format we can have as Ultra HD 2160 p 30, I believe. Uh, make sure we're setting this 30. Basically do everything you'd normally do. And you're pretty much good to go at this point, except you want to go to color management here and making sure the color science is on ACES CC. Uh, leave the ACES version as 1.3. And I believe you want to set the ACES input transform to uh, Rec 709. So you want to hit save on that, click change. And then once you right click on this and for example, click create new timeline, you will see that this is what your clip looks like with ACES applied to it. So if you head into your edit here, you're allowed to scroll through it. Um, obviously, you can look at this and you can see, OK, well, it's a little darker than you'd like it. So that's where you got the freedom to head into the color part here. And don't get too confused by the nodes. It's the part down here that you want. Um, you can tweak these to your liking. So if you want to pick up the shadows for some reason because it's too dark, you can do that fairly easily. Getting a little more detail on the screen there. And then I will leave you guys to experiment with this how you want to. But in essence, you can tweak the various values of color through this. It allows you to do it in quite a subtle way, but it's a whole rabbit hole in itself because it sort of involves color science and whatnot but you can start to speak about and get the kind of results that you're after. And once you want to export, you can head to deliver here and make sure your settings are the right here. Make sure your resolution is equal and you're pretty much ready to export there. But in general, that is a super quick crash course into how you can import and export ACES correctly um, to then upload and edit elsewhere if you wanted to. So thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful somehow and um, I will see you very soon with more content. Thank you.